hey guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be all about isolation so to get the perfect isolation your lashes need to be going straight so you want to make sure you're brushing them first then you always want to go in with your tweezers almost closed like this you don't want your tweezers to be too wide because then it's going to be impossible to get just one um, lash in between them i always try to isolate from the bottom and just again go in with your tweezers almost closed and Try to wait until you see that you have one lash in between your tweezers before you open up, okay? So you're gonna go in almost closed. Once you see that you have one lash in between your tweezers, you're going to open wide and rest on the tape. Don't worry about poking them because with all the tape, they're not gonna be able to fill it. If you try to keep your tweezers in the air while you're isolating, that's when you're gonna have the most trouble and you're gonna lose that isolation. So you wanna make sure that you're resting your tweezers on that tape. Don't push down super hard, but rest your tweezers on the tape to keep that isolation. So once you get all the steps to isolation, it will be the next step, which is placing fans or classic lashes onto a person's natural lash. So you wanna make sure that you're following all the proper steps to isolation. You wanna make sure you're going in with your tweezers almost closed starting from the base of the lash. Once you have one lash, you wanna open wide and rest your tweezers on the tape to ensure you always keep that isolation. And we're gonna take the fan and apply it from the back of the lash. It's very important that you leave a gap between the person's skin and either the fan or the classic lash to ensure comfort and to make sure that you're not pulling on someone's skin, okay? Once you place the lash, you wanna hold for at least two to three seconds before you drop that isolation. A lot of people struggle with isolating the inner corner, but you're gonna do it the exact same way. The only thing that I find that helps is if you open up a little bit wider so that you can see it because most of the inner lashes are a little bit thinner and they're harder to see. Um, I also like to push up on the lash to make sure it doesn't get stuck to the tape. Okay, so with this lash, there is another way you can attach the lashes. You don't have to always attach it from the back. You can attach lashes from the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do that. So you're just gonna place it right on top instead of put it, putting it on the back. Um, in my opinion, I don't like doing this unless it's with classic lashes, but there's really no difference. A lot of students ask what's the difference between putting it on the back and the top, and it's really just a preference thing. There is no difference. So again, with the inner corner, you wanna make sure you're isolating very, very wide so that you can see the lash, and go ahead and put it on from the back and just push up so that that extension doesn't get stuck to the tape. With this one, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to attach it from the top again. So you're just gonna place the extension right on top of the natural lash. And then if it starts to twist, you're just going to push it back into place and hold it for a couple seconds to make sure it sets straight and not to the side. So the glue usually acts as if a magnet once it comes close to a natural lash. So from the back to me, it's very easy to do with fans. It should just stick right to it. And here's me placing the lash um, from the front. You're just going to place the extension right on top of the natural lash. It should sit right on top of it. Again, whether you place from the back or from the front is all preference. There's no right or wrong. 